So I think we'll get started then this morning. If I could uh, get everyone's attention for a moment. So welcome. This is our uh, first town hall meeting for this year. It's been a, uh, an extremely busy first half of the year. A lot of things going on that we're going to touch on. So we thought uh, for efficiency purposes, we would combine a coffee with, with the uh, town hall meeting. So we're going to have maybe uh, 20 to 30 minutes of talking heads, so to speak. And then we will uh, go into our format of a coffee with where it's more of a drop in and you can experience some of the different initiatives that are going on within the organization through some of the pods that have been set up. So I'd first like to introduce our mayor. Mr. Mayor, if you could stand, please. I don't know if we have any other elected officials. I know a couple thought they would be able to make it. So we have been busy, as I indicated, with uh, council orientation and budgets and so on, and a lot of work going on uh, out in the, the uh, community. And uh, one of them that I particularly love, I love it all, but uh, looking out my window, I see the, um, the trail work and that bridge going on and that beautiful uh, rock and sitting area that was uh, put in there by council to thank staff for all the work that they've done to put us into the top 25 best places to live in Canada for four years. And we have once again secured a spot within the top 25. So that's fantastic. And that's coming along very nicely. The other thing that that project represents is um, working together right across the organization. You know, we've got horticulture, we have a, a great stonemason within the organization, we have engineering doing the design, so that's fantastic. And I think that one itself deserves a bit of a round of applause. <laughs> that, uh, I think, is reflective of everything that's going on, whether it's physical work or administrative work or what have you. So today's theme, can anybody guess what our theme is today? Somebody's got to get it. I'll bet Liz knows. <laughs> right, the annual report, for those that have seen the annual report, is modeled after It's a Wonderful Life, so it's a wonderful town, and it certainly is. So that is our theme today. So our sessions are going to focus on the Council's strategic priorities. We're going to touch on uh, the leadership vision that has been struck. And that um, consists of, of a group of six um, areas of focus that we call the even betters, so that we can get even better at doing this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, we're doing a fantastic job, but we always look for continuous improvement, and we can do things even better. So you will hear about that as well. You'll also hear a little bit about the human resources review, the, you know, that people service across the organization. And then those items will also be covered in the pods as well. And then very important, and maybe you can start to think about it right now, is there will be a, a brief part where you can ask any question that you would like. And please do not be shy. Uh, ask those questions and we'll do our best to answer them here or we will provide you with an answer at a later time. So I wanted to start out, as we normally do, to just recognize very briefly about four areas where uh, staff give back to the community in different ways. And I'm sure that there are many, many others. So this uh, represents the couple of areas, the uh, Bike to Work Day, which is really giving back to the environment. Um, our staff do a great job in, in that area, and Earth Hour also falls into that category. And then the Eric uh, Flower Sale, that... Um, was that the proceeds of that were going to the Employee assistant, Assistance Fund. And uh, that event uh, sort of took place at the Spring Luncheon at the Operations Centre, which is always a fantastic success. And that was during Public Works Week. So that was excellent. And uh, we had a, um, a giving back uh, initiative there at the same time. And then down in the lower right-hand corner, uh, that is an individual that uh, in our organization that really uh, responded to one of our values, and that's courage and creativity. So anyone recognize that fellow on the left? <laughs> and it's growing back, isn't it, Chief? <laughs> so now, uh, welcome to uh, new staff that have uh, joined our team. And uh, this is since our last town hall meeting, which was in December. So um, some have been with us for some time. And we'll start with Grace March, if she is here. 
Grace. Grace, I had a feeling we did this once before, did we? Okay, well, when you're doing a really incredible job, you get introduced twice. <laughs> and then the next one is uh, Antoinetta Malaconi, if I have that pronunciation correct. Good. And Katie Karabok. Karabok, there we go. Katie. In the development and infrastructure area, we have Andrea Derrick, and Andrea is the admin assistant, but more importantly, she is the captain of the Dragon Boat team this year. <laughs> Andrea, do you want to stand up in case we're looking for more paddlers? <laughs> they know who to contact. <laughs> Dan Dizio, facility workers, Dan here. And Matthew, is it Doki? Doki? Not here. And Shannon Mackay. And Valerie Saunders. And Emily Vanderdeen. Emily. In uh, Central York Fire Services, we have Bradley Miller, probation firefighter. And then, yeah. So this uh, next area, I just wanted to say a couple words about it first. That is, um, this time of year and, and a little bit earlier in the year, there's all of a sudden a lot of excitement and energy in the organization. And I love that time of year. That's the time of year that uh, students join us and seasonal workers. Um, and they do infuse a lot of new ideas and excitement into the organization. So it's a fantastic time. It's a great time for the staff members that are dealing with uh, students in particular to um, assist them by you know, encouraging them in the work that they do, to answer the questions that they have, but to also to model the values that, that we try to portray as an organization. So I know that we all do that. I just wanted to reinforce that again. Those students are our future. You know, the future for public service, it's going to be a very challenging future in terms of uh, replacing all of the expertise and knowledge that we have in this room as you reach the end of your careers. So that is uh, very important. And I thought, uh, well, first of all, I want, what I wanted to do, we have 12 office students, 70 summer aquatic staff, 90 summer camp staff, 43 summer park staff, and two in Century York Fire. Those numbers are incredible, and it is really, I think, a tribute to the organization. But if I could ask anyone that falls into that group, if they could please stand, and if I missed you, you fall under a different category, please stand also. There we go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> now, just uh, thinking about uh, being a student and thinking way back, being a uh, you know a formal student. I'm a student of life right now, but uh, back then, um, I personally started in the um, the public sector as uh, what they termed. I think it was an official title of rink rat. So I was a rink rat through grade eleven. Uh, working, you know, one night a week, four to twelve, week every other week or every weekend, but different shifts. Uh, working as a facility worker in the Heron Park Arena in West Hill, Scarborough, Toronto area, and those were fantastic times. You know, uh, to learn about what goes on in that area, to have fun, build relationships, and so on. So I wanted to ask a question. We have a lot of people in the room that are have been in this um, public service for quite some time. And did you start as an employee in the municipal world? And if you did, if you could please stand. We'll just see what that looks like. And I'm standing also. So that's great. So that, that is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a bit of a reflection of, um, you know, you get that bug. That bug that um, you're doing something, giving back to the community, also getting remuneration for it, of course. but. Uh, there's a, for me, there's sort of a greater um, achievement or whatever out of it that uh, you can see the product of your work, and it uh, gives you some passion, and you work harder at it. So that's great. So now, a welcome to the whole team. And I just wanted to say that it is a team that uh, where we work hard together, <coughs> excuse me, where we share passion for our work together. We support each other in times, and uh, particularly 
in those really difficult times, such as the time that uh, was experienced by the organization, the grieving period um, that uh, we've experienced and still experience recently. So that's something that you share together as a group. And uh, the team, of course, came together fantastic in that uh, regard as well. We also grow together. So it's a team that I am absolutely proud to be part of, and I hope you are as well. So we are going to move to spotlights on accomplishments. And uh, as usual, it's tough to make sure that you do not forget an accomplishment or not identify it. So if there's anything else, I'd ask you to either shout them out or give them to us so we can make sure that we do catch them in our next annual report and so on. So with the beginning of a, a new council, we started out with a very comprehensive uh, council orientation program. Uh, in addition, new council uh, needed to approve a 2015 budget. That got approved on target in terms of the uh, percentage target and the schedule, so that's quite an achievement. And for those, I think it's everyone in the organization, but particularly finance and the, uh, uh, the commissions, um, this is the year that we do two budgets in one year. So we hope to have 2016 approved by December of this year. Um, in addition to that, council's strategic direction. So it's important for us to get off the ground early with council to know exactly what their thoughts are, that where they want us to go, and then everything is shaped to achieve those strategic priorities. Uh, in addition, the leadership team came together early in this council, uh, SLT, OLT, to form a, a vision. And uh, that vision is up there, creating an environment for extraordinary public service. And we have formed the uh, group of six, which you're going to hear about and you hear about the membership. We did talk about that at our uh, December town hall meeting to set that off. Uh, there are a number of people-related initiatives that... Uh, been underway and are uh, completed or coming along, the people plan, the performance partnership, just to name a couple of them. Then in uh, staff engagement, we did put out the request for volunteers, got a really good response to that. So I hope people in the organization can see that uh, if they want to get involved on committees and so on, they absolutely can do that. Come on in. That they uh, can do that. And uh, we've got quite a, uh, an extensive team across the organization. The um, uh, giving back, I mentioned, there are others, the administrative initiatives, the uh, complete review of our committee structure and revamping it, that is a major initiative. Uh, in the area of uh, outside operations and operations inside and just in general, we have the public service delivery uh, review that is um, uh, moving through currently to uh, fruition and the HR review which is underway and you'll hear an update on it. Uh, lots of recognition and awards that I'll touch on in a moment. And then the day-to-day -day service delivery, which we can't forget about. We continue to deliver an incredible um, level of service to the community, and it is recognized in the community surveys. The uh, public absolutely appreciate that, and that is why, once again, I think, uh, in, to a big part, why we are named within the top 25 best places to live in Canada again. So in five years, we've been there four times, or, or I think now it's uh, over six years, we've been there five times. We'll get that right. Uh, then if we move on, there's uh, the water conversion process has been very uh, challenging. And uh, just to ensure that the public do get absolutely safe water out there and there's a high level of, uh, of um, uh, comfort and, and uh, trust. Uh, the recreation playbook, very innovative approach that's been used and is, uh, has pretty well come to, um, to a, a really successful conclusion. The recreation pop-up shop, town and economic development website, and uh, many more. Lots of festivals going on and uh, many other things. So is there a major initiative that anyone would like to shout out that perhaps I've missed? Anita. I wish I knew that. I would have done a better job to start this. <laughs> no, that's great. Fantastic. Yeah, great to, in that regard. That is um, a great way to get that. Come on in. Come and join us. You're going to have to stand maybe on the far side.
Well, that's fantastic that you could join us. So just, um, we're not going to repeat, but out of everyone that just walked in the room, do we have any students, seasonal workers that have just walked in? Could we just get you to stand so we can recognize you? <laughs> okay, wave. <laughs> any others? Yes. Oh, that, that uh, it was touch a truck or hug a truck. <laughs> it, it looked to me like a hug fest. I went out there. It was unbelievable. I could not believe the number of people that showed up for that. And just the um, whole, uh, it was so extensive that you had public uh, vehicles in there and uh, different equipment. But in addition to that, the private sector, the police, ambulance. So if you miss that, and if you have kids in particular, I didn't have a kid, but I loved it. Just go out and enjoy it. It's, it's really something. So that's a good one. Thank you. Any others? So as I say, if you think of them later, please give them to us. We'll put it on our year-end accomplishment uh, listing. So um, in keeping with the theme and the recognition that uh, this organization's given uh, or has been given across Canada, the award goes to, to all of you. And this is a huge list of... Uh, just within the first six months of recognition across Canada. So the first one is the CAMA Association, Progressive Leadership Development. They're going to be here at Council presenting that on Monday. Uh, AMCTO, the Danby Award, uh, and the MISA Award for the e-bidding system, Share the Road, um, Cycling Coalition, Life Saving Society, Recognition Red Cross Swimming Program, AVA Digital Awards, Marcom Award, uh, the video, uh, uh, video, videography or whatever, but, but videography, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> awards, and um, I'm sure there are others that are in the pipeline. So just fantastic, and I think that that, uh, not only do you deserve a round of applause, but please stand and pat each other on the back, to those that are to the right and to the left of you. We can get you to stand up and take a bow. Okay, so moving to our next uh, part of this. This is the uh, puzzle piece that we put together for, um, in December for the December Town Hall meeting. And it, it was an effort to show how everything connects in, uh, from the vision, the mission, the community survey results so that you can adjust where we're uh, going, and the council's strategic priorities. So we're going to um, then start with uh, a bit of an update on council's strategic priorities, and Peter Nohammer is going to... Uh, do that for us, and I did say you might have to do that in a Jimmy Stewart accent. Everyone okay with that? Here we go. Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> That's about as far as you get. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Bob. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to say a few words about the uh, Council's strategic priorities. And this was uh, a process, as probably a lot of you know, um, earlier in the year I, I uh, updated uh, many of you on this. Uh, it began in January, um, and it was a facilitated uh, process where council was taken through a couple of workshops uh, just to help address and set some of the uh, priorities for the coming term. And it's a four-year term stretching to 2018. Uh, we uh, helped council as staff uh, uh, through the facilitator uh, prepare those uh, priorities and uh, presented them through a couple of reports uh, in uh, May and June, and they've now been confirmed. And since they're confirmed, uh, not only are they council priorities, but uh, they're all of our priorities now too. So it's up to all of us to help council achieve those priorities uh, during the term. Um, they uh, basically extend on five major themes. Uh, there are 14 priorities, uh, but along five themes, and they um, listed there in no particular order, although many of them do fall under the first one of economic development and job creation. It's very important uh, uh, for Council to uh, be seen as uh, promoting a good solid economy in town and where people um, are gainfully employed and uh, everyone's busy. Um, the uh, enhanced recreational opportunities, of course, that uh, has always been uh, a focus of uh, New Market. 
Um, people enjoy where they live and have lots of opportunity to engage in recreational activities, and it will continue to be a strong priority. Um, community engagement, um, not to say that uh, communication isn't already done well, but there's always ways of improving that. So there are a few priorities on that uh, theme. And uh, along the lines of efficiency and uh, financial management, <coughs> in particular with respect to um, tracking uh, performance and all of the uh, good achievements that are, are done by, uh, by the town and by the administration. And lastly, uh, traffic safety and mitigation. It always seems to rank high in the community response as uh, something that uh, residents are very concerned about um, and uh, as an organization we need to be seen as responding to. Um, so very quickly, I'm not going to uh, spend too much time on this, but I just wanted to give you a flavor as to what those 14 priorities are and how they break down uh, along those uh, five dimensions. So under economic development and jobs, um, you can see that uh, implementing a, a broadband network uh, in town is very important. Um, and this will continue with an RFP that's already out there trying to complete that and implement a pilot project along some key corridors. Uh, reviewing and prioritizing the economic development strategy. This will be working with the New Market Economic Development Advisory Committee, um, trying to uh, refine an economic development strategy, perhaps holding some summits or two with stakeholders. Uh, revise, revitalizing the community center lands. This is around the uh, Riverwalk Commons area and trying to address the uh, ongoing pressures of uh, downtown parking. Um, creating a strategy for vibrant and livable uh, corridors along the two Viva project corridors on Davis Drive and Young Street and beyond. Um, and um, <clears throat> that will be also uh, striving to implement the uh, secondary plan, which was approved in uh, 2014 along with trail connections and marketing the corridor so that it's attractive for new development. Um, supporting innovative projects. Again, innovation is, is always strong in new market and uh, through examples like with South Lake, uh, the Create It Now Center and initiative uh, will be an example of, of that. Next slide. Uh, on recreational opportunities, uh, it's uh, enhancing our recreational and community facilities. Um, recently, the uh, Recreation Playbook was uh, before committee on earlier this week on Monday and hopefully will be uh, approved at council uh, this coming week. Um, and uh, we're all looking forward to uh, the opening of Old Town Hall uh, later this year and that's a, again an example of how we can uh, enhance our recreational suite of community facilities. Um, the second one there under community and neighborhood projects. Uh, you, you, of course, are familiar with last winter with the pilot projects of outdoor ice rinks, and skating rinks. Um, that's an example of something like that. And of course, as we move forward and begin to program it in our budgets, uh, community splash pads in the summertime will also be an example of, uh, of a project that can fall under that priority. Uh, next slide. Under community engagement, uh, just basically aligning ourselves with uh, best practices and the way we uh, communicate uh, both outwardly to the residents and, and businesses uh, within town and also um, how we take in the information and how we respond to people that call our call center and um, <clears throat> how we respond to people in a customer-oriented way. Um, the second point there is an interesting one there just about engaging, uh, changing resident demographics. And this is uh, addressing not only uh, the changing makeup of our community, uh, looking at different ways of communicating, perhaps addressing any perceived language barriers that we might have or, or um, uh, um, try have to address in the coming years, but also even just the changing age makeup of our community, looking at more of a strategy for dealing with uh, the needs of seniors. Next slide. <coughs> and uh, under the efficiency financial management, uh, looking at effective and efficient services is something that's a key priority. Um, this includes looking at partnership opportunities with our N6 neighbors. Um, also, in the way in which we uh, track, uh, track our work. Um, for instance, uh, the town embarked on an asset management uh, plan and strategy, and that will continue uh, to try and uh, do as best jobs possible in terms of assessing our assets and programming the needs for, uh, for further investment in the coming years. Um, and benchmarking is always important, keeping track of um, how we're doing, how well we're doing, uh, being able to celebrate those successes and that good performance, and also identifying gaps where we need to put more resources to work. And 
uh, the last theme, traffic uh, safety and mitigation. Uh, safe streets, again, so that's what I was mentioning before. Uh, people in the community are concerned that, you know, not only do the children have a safe way to get to school every day, but also people feel comfortable um, enjoying walking, cycling on, on the street system. And this, um, the, the engineering staff uh, in the audience will be familiar with the three E's, and these are always around education, enforcement, and engineering initiatives. So um, that'll be important to address that. Uh, improving traffic congestion. This is uh, minimizing disruption. Sometimes uh, people can get frustrated, especially with all of the activities going on in town and now during uh, the summer with a lot of construction projects, uh, ways in which we can minimize disruption um, and coordinate with our colleagues at the region and utilities so that we um, ensure that there are open routes as much as possible. And the last one, just supporting major transit initiatives. Um, not only the Viva Next projects that are nearing completion on Davis Drive and starting up on Young Street, but also um, a lot of investment that will happen uh, with the GO Transit system uh, through uh, uh, increased service on the GO train uh, in the coming years. And just the last slide, <coughs> um, it, it would not be complete without regular reporting back to uh, Council, and the plan is to report back as a scorecard type of format uh, twice a year to update Council and and everyone in town on the progress along these uh, priority dimensions. Um, I also at this time want to acknowledge the hard work of everyone um, in town who was uh, responsible for helping council bring forward these priorities, um, uh, not the least of which were folks like Andrew Brower and Cindy Wackett and Wanda Bennett as part of the key team in helping, but also all of OLT who was responsible for helping bring these priorities forward and helping council achieve their goals. So setting them for the coming term. So thanks very much, everyone. Thank you, Peter. So you will see those strategic priorities. You'll see a linkage to everything that you do uh, tying into those. And um, you'll see those particularly uh, in positions such as commissioner, director, manager, supervisors, where um, that will be part of your PDP to to tie that into, or P, uh, 2P, which um, we talked about in December as well. So next, uh, is it a Woody Harrelson accent you're using, Ian? Ian, come on up. Woody Harrelson. <laughs> Did anybody here do Woody Harrelson? That's a, yikes. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, anyways, uh, I, I have the pleasure of talking to you a little bit about SLT's vision and uh, some of the administrative action teams that are about to be launched. Uh, as, as, uh, as we all know, um, you, we, we're all incredibly busy on our day-to-day -day, uh, jobs and uh, we all take incredible pride in terms of striving for excellence in our own individual responsibilities. But a great organization is about more than just that. A great organization is about looking at it uh, at itself continuously and looking for continuous improvement as a whole as an organization moves forward. So to do that, we need to go beyond just what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and organizationally decide how we can get better. Uh, and it fits so nicely with our corporate mission statement of making New Market even better. So to that end, there's been a lot of work uh, that's gone on by SLT and OLT in terms of how we can complement some of the influencers that uh, affect our day-to-day -day business, not the least of which is the Council of Strategic Priorities that Peter just spoke of, uh, and how can we actually uh, advance the organization administratively uh, in support of, of some of those initiatives. So what we've done, uh, and you have at your seat here, everybody should have a copy of it, uh, a chart that hopefully explains it all uh, very concisely. It t speaks to the six administrative action teams. And in the inner circle, you, you'll see that there's some influencers. Now, there's many influencers beyond just these, but these are the ones that would be key influencers in terms of how would we want to administratively advance the organization in the next few years. Uh, we've gone through an exercise, as Bob alluded to uh, earlier, that uh, involved an SLT vision statement, which is a very simplistic statement, but it comes from a, a whole lot of work in the background in terms of how can we actually be the most effective leaders we can be within the organization? And it came down to creating an environment for extraordinary public service. So how we, how we can create conditions for everybody in this organization to thrive and to continue to strive for excellence on a day-to-day -day basis. 
So you see that the, on the chart, there's the six uh, outer ring of the um, even betters, as, as was mentioned earlier. So there's six focus areas. And, and hovering around all of those will be a continuous uh, effort to ensure innovation across. So they're not just six silos that are going to work on things. There's innovation that's going to be woven into each one and a celebration of the success that flows out of each of those. So chris Ann is going to speak in a minute about uh, the composition of those teams, but I'd just like to uh, add a couple more things first. Uh, and the first of which is these teams are, are uh, made up of people that have uh, volunteered within the organization to participate. So a, a quick thank you to everybody uh, who's expressed interest. So a quick round of applause uh, before we get into that. So just very, very briefly on each team, uh, one is uh, even stronger leadership creating an even better place to work. So that's going to focus on things like creating a great work environment, focused on people, focused on performance, how we can all be leaders in this organization. So some of the key questions would be things like, uh, what can management do different, better? Uh, what can we all do to make this a better workplace? Another team is the even better customer service. So it'll focus on things like, uh, how we can have even better collaboration, both in terms of internal customer service, so peer-to-peer, -peer, how we speak, interact, work with each other, but also externally, how we interact with the community and with our, our partners, our contractors, et cetera. So some of the key questions would be, how can we ensure better peer-to-peer -peer customer service? How can we provide better uh, and excellent customer service to residents? Another one would be even better communications, and that's focusing on how we can ensure open communication and engagement Again, both internally and externally to, to all audiences. So what's, what works well today? How can we ensure a better communication with each other? And what can we do to provide better communication to residents? Uh, even better tracking of success can focus on how we can formally measure the great things that we do and how we can identify and track things that we want to improve upon in the organization. So what formal measurement tools could cover all areas? Uh, how can me measurement assistant in uh, each of us getting a sense of accomplishment, a sense of motivation. So we all come to work every day striving to do great things, but it's great to have it uh, somewhat documented so we can, we can know that we're actually making the difference that we believe that we are. Uh, another one would be even better matching resources and priorities, so focusing on how we can ensure an alignment of resources, so both people, money, uh, with our organizational priorities, so that, Again, when we're striving to do these great things, we feel like we've got the resources aligned with where we're trying to move the organization. So how can we better align priorities and resources? How can we ensure expectations and outcomes are aligned with those resources? And then finally, we've got the even better creativity and innovation. So focusing on how we can embed staff empowerment, risk-taking, and innovation into planning and daily exercise. There's a great thing that you know, we do a lot of work with, uh, with uh, Dr. Dave Williams at South Lake Hospital, and, he, and we're doing some initiatives through uh, Create It Now. And he's been saying for years, and it's an interesting comment, he says that it's important in healthcare innovation to focus on, on uh, succeed early or fail fast. And so failure is not something to be, to be feared. It's something that's necessary in terms of truly moving an organization forward in terms of being creative and innovative. So embracing that culture here in terms of some risk-taking that we can uh, make new market uh, better as a result of. Um, so what can staff, uh, what does staff empowerment, risk taking and innovation mean to us? Uh, and how can we ensure that it happens? Uh, how can management support uh, this in, throughout the organization? Because so, it's an easy thing to say, it's a harder thing to do. So those are the six administrative action teams on a high level. They're gonna be uh, an ongoing uh, process that is going to uh, move the organization forward administratively. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to turn it over at this point to Chris Ann, and she's going to talk to you a little more about each of the teams. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. I don't do accents, so um, I won't be uh, participating in that. What I'm going to do is just briefly go over how we're going to achieve those deliverables that Ian just mentioned. So the action teams have been established, um, and there's a pretty big cross-section of departments, actually a cross-section of each department in the municipality that's participating in these action teams. Um, so uh, with these achievables in mind, uh, so how are we going to do that? Um, we're going to be working, uh, myself as an action team member, along with the other action uh, teams. We'll be working on a monthly basis in order to achieve the deliverables. So we'll be working to set um, standards and determine items for action for SLT and OLT. Um, and then meeting to monitor the progress of these items. 
Ian's really summarized the deliverables, so I'm going to keep it brief and I won't repeat them. Um, I encourage each of you, though, to watch for engagement opportunities because they, we will need the uh, engagement of each and every one of you in order to, um, to create something that's going to be achievable for the, for the municipality. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take it to the slide to introduce all of the team members. And if there's any action uh, team members here, I'd like for you to stand up to single you out. I know there's people here, so. <laughs> so if you can give them a round of applause for volunteering their time to participate on these initiatives. I'm not going to read everyone's name because it wouldn't be fair for me to butcher names. Um, uh, if, uh, so if you have any suggestions, um, any ideas at all, I encourage you to contact the action team members um, or come and speak with us today. Um, we are all here obviously together to work uh, to make Newmarket even better. So thank you for that. And um, I look forward to working with each of you over uh, the course of this project. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Anita, if you can come up and give us an update on the HR review, please. And whatever accent you want. That uh, leaves it wide open, doesn't it? Good morning, everyone. Uh, I thought about Audrey Hepburn. Maybe I could start with her. But I practiced it. And I ended up sounding like the lamb on Simpsons, you know, when they're talking to Lisa. So I'm not going to do it. But anyways, good morning, everyone. So we wanted to keep you updated on the status of the HR review. And just to quickly recap, the purpose was to take a look at HR's alignment of work, the processes, their structure, and overall effectiveness to ensure that we're meeting not only the needs of today, but the needs of the uh, future as well. So a, a small cross-corporate staff team got together right at the very beginning. We uh, reviewed the RFP, and then we awarded the RFP. And the successful proponents, Stratford managers, have been around here for a while now. And uh, they got to work very, very quickly. They were collecting policies and uh, procedures. And um, they, um, we got busy. And I say we, that's the royal we. That was really Heather. Is Heather here this morning? There she is. Heather got very, very busy setting up all of the meetings the focus groups, the one-on-ones, and that was a lot of work undertaken in a very short time. So really appreciate Heather's work and also everyone else that was involved that gave the time to uh, participate in those groups. Um, you might be interested in knowing that during that consultation process, it involved over 60 employees. And those 60 employees were from all uh, walks of our corporation. So it was a great collaborative effort, and we really appreciate it. So now the consultant is drafting their report. Our target is uh, to have that draft report to the steering committee by the end of the month. The steering committee is made up of the CAO, the commissioners, and uh, the HR director. So um, once we provide that input, then the report or the consultant will go back and will finalize the report. We know that there were uh, candid comments that were made to the consultant via that consultation process. And all those comments will be shared separately with the CAO because we recognize that those comments are really important to us. So next steps, we've got a timeline to develop and then to communicate to you just so that you are kept well informed of the process. And, uh, you know, we kind of see that timeline as things as to when a presentation might be made to staff and when you could reasonably expect to see an implementation plan. Given that we're going into the summer now, I would think that'll likely be in the fall. So stay tuned. There'll be more details uh, coming on that shortly. So, next slide. So thanks to all of the staff that were involved. And I have to say, particularly thank you to the HR team. If any of you have ever done a 360 self-assessment, you know what that's like. That's pretty tough to put yourself out there. And the HR team has been very, very open to this process. So it's really been a positive exercise. It's another great example 
of new markets continuous improvement effort and we all have ownership in this and uh, we look forward to what's coming. So thank you all very much. Happy Friday. <laughs>